Welcome back everyone, it's Matimus and thank you so much for joining me on this video today. In today's video we are going to be talking about fighter jets. Now as most of you are aware I am not a subject matter expert when it comes to the Air Force and fighter jets or any kind of aircraft really in general. However, recently when I travelled to Lethbridge to see the International Air Show there about two weeks ago and you feel free to check out my video on that, I had a great time. But seeing that CF-18 flying at the air show, although a very proud and amazing moment seeing those fighter jets fly, it really did remind me again that these aircraft need to be replaced by something more modern, more technologically advanced, and more appealing to what the Canadian Air Force's needs are nowadays. Now, in late 2016, the Royal Canadian Air Force announced a plan to replace its aging fighter jet fleet of these CF-18 aircraft, which is more than 30 years old, guys. The Trudeau government will apparently initiate an open competition to replace the CF-18s, which has been going on for many years now. While the Royal Canadian Air Force is currently in the process of acquiring 18 new Boeing FA-18 EF Super Hornets to serve as an interim fleet to bridge the, quote, capability gap. This breaks away from the promise made by the Harper government in 2010 of buying 65 F-35s from Lockheed Martin. Among the fighter aircrafts which are likely to be considered though is the Swedish Saab Gripen EF, which would be a great fit, I feel, for the Royal Canadian Air Force, if used alongside potentially the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Now what I must say guys is this is really just a personal opinion, as I've said many times in my videos before, it's not factual, it's pure hearsay from my own opinion, I feel completely obliged to take any kind of criticism from you guys if you disagree with this completely and I get it and if any information in this video is incorrect please feel free to correct me. So before exploring the reasons why the Gripen would be an effective replacement for these CF-18 fighter jets it's necessary to analyze actually the missions of which Canada is trying to use the CF-18s for. First, Canada is committed to NORAD, which is tasked with monitoring and protecting the North American airspace. Canada also cooperates with NATO operations around the world, and currently active in Eastern Europe as most of you are probably well aware. In 2014, Canada was responsible for monitoring the Baltic countries' airspace as the head of the NATO Baltic Air Policy Mission, or BAP. In addition, Canada has recently deployed a battalion in Latvia in order to reinforce the country's defences in the face of Russia's yeah, shady stuff. <laughs> Finally, Canada has used its CF-18s to contribute towards global coalition against ISIS and Iraq and Syria, Operation Impact. In these missions, Canada is faced with both conventional and unconventional threats in varying weather conditions. Therefore, the Air Force must be ready to face conventional armies and fighter fleets to effectively operate against insurgents or terrorists and pretty much render any anti-access or aerial denial strategies completely ineffective. In order to accomplish all of these different tasks that were given to the Air Force, it's really got to acquire a mixed fighter fleet made up of both F-35s and Gripens in just my own personal opinion. I would say forming a mixed fighter fleet combining of both F-35s and EFP Gripens is one of the best options for Canada if it wants to face the challenges of both today and tomorrow for future generations of fighter jets. The F-35 is currently one of the finest jet fighters on the market. There's no doubt about it guys, it's just that's, it's factual information. And when it comes to stealth missions, you know the whole stealth technology, it's definitely a high contender. If employed by the Royal Canadian Air Force, it would be capable of countering A2 AD bubbles, and to penetrate enemy defences with greater ease than the Gripen. Furthermore, if facing an enemy fleet, it would be unable to spot the F-35, the latter would ensure Canada's domination of the sky. In turn though, the Gripen is more versatile than the F-35 and has a great weapon flexibility plan. It may even be equipped with the MBDA Meteor 
BVARAAM missile, which can shoot down both airborne threats from more than 100 kilometers away. The Gripen may be used in various operations, whether in air-to-air -air or air-to-ground combat, in the Arctic or in the Middle East. Its small size, its speed, and its 27mm Mauser BK-27 cannon, coupled with the Gripen's electronic warfare system and infrared search and track capabilities, make it an extremely lethal threat when it comes to dogfights and air-to-air -air fighting. In addition, the Gripen is highly interoperable, which basically means it can be swapped out with all different variations of kit, equipment, you know, specifications for it to do the job it needs to do. It's very good for reconnaissance missions thanks to its data link system that can actually communicate very effectively between other Grippens, and choosing the Gripen to replace the aging CF-18s would pretty much bolster the NORAD and Canadian NATO deployments. Overall guys, it's really a no-brainer with this jet, there's just a lot of different options, but let's talk a little bit of why the Gripen. Seeing the challenges that Canada is soon likely to face, it seems necessary that the Air Force is to develop this mixed fighter fleet. Only relying on F-35s, which was the original plan, or on Gripens itself only two, will not suffice to counter tomorrow's challenges. In comparison to other fighter jets, the Gripen has some pretty good important advantages. First off, it's pretty cheap compared to the French Raphael or the F-35, and its operational costs are a lot lower than that of all other Western fighter jets, and this is integral to pretty much every Air Force's requirements. If you can't keep the aircraft out of the hangar, there's no point having it. The Gripen may be deployed to areas where military facilities are also very undeveloped, since it can take off from very small runways due to its high flexibility and can operate in all types of weather. Now this is pretty standard for most fighter jets nowadays, different weather, different temperatures all over the world, they need to be operating all over the place. However, this aircraft is deemed pretty much focused on being able to be operable everywhere and anywhere and that's very very important because if you can turn around an aircraft that's been damaged or needs repairs extremely quickly or even just re-armoring the damn thing and giving it some new firepower on there very very quickly it's able to turn around extremely fast and that from my personal opinion being in the aviation industry when it comes to changing out engines and you know uh, standability and you know cross compatibility it's it's huge nowadays that's what customers want they want the ability for quick easy transfer of things uh, swapping of parts commonality between parts cheaper parts cheaper weapon systems i'm sure in the military sector too but let's be honest this makes the gripen a perfect fit for the canadian military mission especially in the arctic and for deployments abroad as part of nato in addition it is possible to refuel this jet mid-air through a probe and drogue system and currently used for CF-18s already, so it's not going to be anything different to the standard systems that are already out there. This ensures greater autonomy when conducting operations. The Gripen's high weapon flexibility also means it can adapt its payload depending on the mission, and thus excel in surveillance missions and air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. Its data link system is one of the best in the world, being able to actually communicate with each other fighter jet on the battlefield to enable for a very effective battle picture. In 2013, Brazil ordered 36 Gripen EFs from Saab, which will be built jointly in both Sweden and Brazil. The industrial cooperation and transfer of technologies from Saab Industries to Brazil, along with the creation of a Gripen EF maintenance center in Brazil, is an extremely long-term source of jobs for Brazil's industries. Canada could benefit greatly from this deal, as it would boost the huge aerospace industry which Canada is actually trying to get into anyway as it is while at the same time trying to ensure total operational independence once the Gripens are combat ready. Guys, it's a no-brainer. If we can produce these aircraft in-country instead of sourcing them to America or other countries all the time, that's a huge thing. That's not just building aircraft and making pilots and militaries happy. That's making people happy, the actual people of the country that are producing the aircraft for their military. That's a huge thing for me and something that I've actually touched base on on a video in the past, talking a little bit about the Avro Arrow, which clearly we're never going to see fly again. Uh, in fact, they are trying to pull it out from a lake somewhere in Canada right now, the old burnt-out husk of it that they got rid of, but that's another story. But guys, literally though, the Gripen to me is a perfect candidate for the open competition initiated by the Trudeau government, and acquiring a joint fleet of both these and F-35s would ensure Canadian control of the skies for decades to come. I personally think the Gripen is one of the greatest choices for Canada, and I really do think that our government needs to pull its finger out of its something or other and just choose a fighter. Stop spending wasteful money on these interim capability gap quote 
fighter jets, the Super Hornets, which are again fantastic fighters, but if we're going to pick something, then we pick it and get on with it. We don't buy 18 of something and then buy another bunch later on. If they want to go with the F-35, fine. I don't personally think that the F-35 should continue for the entire fleet of the Canadian Air Force. I think, like I've just mentioned, it should be combined with this fighter. I think the Gripen is a, one of the perfect suitors for it, and, you know, it's just a very good fighter jet overall. Why are we here? Because we make a difference. There's much beauty here, but also violence. Brother has turned against brother, and the whole region is about to burst into flames. We cannot let that happen. Kingdom formation. Heads up for stray trees. The target is a concealed ammunition depot. Equipped with the most advanced sensors and weapons wings can bear, we struggle to prevent the conflict from spreading further. One and two, intention, GPU 49. Three, ready to pop up and buddy lays. Four, air to air cover. An unarmed country desired for its strategic value. It would be overrun any day. So we fly to keep them safe. One and two, leaving IP. Three, captured. One and two, bombs away. Blazing. Ten seconds. We are Gripen pilots. We fly. Matrix, Eagle One. The place is deserted. As always. The area we uphold is vast. But we can stay in the air for hours and nothing escapes our watching eyes. There is a man here. Switching to infrared. This is not good. Matrix, Eagle One. There's a whole army down there. What's that she said? Tanks, Sam's, everything. Put her on one. Let's see what she's got. How did they get all that past us? It's a full invasion force. Less than an hour from the capital. We don't have the resources to stop them. We can't battle them in the field, but we can take out Kanoa Bridge and cut them off. But that's an important bridge for the people we're here to help. We need top-level clearance. Yes, sir. Let well, this happen quick before they have a chance to put Sam's there to protect that bridge. Well, the four-ship kingdom is returning from the morning mission. Uh-huh. They're still four to five minutes or so from the base. But to save time, we can have them land on this rope. That's a little short for a fighter. It's more than enough for Griezmann. Stay off the road. We'll bring in weapons and fuel from the bombed airfield. Turn around doesn't take long. I'll be heading for the bridge in no time. Okay, make it happen. And tell Mr. President, unless he wants visitors, we need that clearance now. Mr. President. Mr. President. They need your decision. Kingdom One. Red green light. Target Canoe Bridge. Released from Bullsa. 18030 miles. Copy green light. Primary target is Kanoa Bridge. Release point, bullseye, 18030 miles. Approaching RP. Estimated time, 12 minutes. Bogey, 1 o'clock. Closing. 1 and 2 will continue on heading. 3 and 4, commit for VID. We meet them out here from time to time. They know we don't fire without warning, so they make us come in close. Turn south. Leave the area now. They also know we carry Meteor and Iris T, so they never engage. But of course, things change. Jeez, heads up! He's leaning you! Declared hostile! Missile, 11 o'clock! Four, spike, defending! Releasing flares! The missile passed you. Keep breaking left. You'll meet almost head on. Close. You have a clean shot at him. Soon. I'm rotating high above you. He's lost all his energy. Have you now? Engaging. Lost two. Splash one. Green lane zero six zero. One thing about shooting your enemies out of the sky, it draws attention. Matrix Kingdom One. New picture. Six groups wall. Five zero miles wide along the border. Eastern group, bullseye, two, one, zero. Six, zero miles, bandit, the way is blocked. And the enemy is moving out? It won't take them long to reach the bridge. 
You have to get to the release point now. Roger that. Kingdom, spread out. Formation box. They outnumber us, but we have the information advantage. Our radar is superior. We have the world's most advanced tactical link. What one sees, all of us know. Heads up, two incoming missiles. One and two, skate. Three and four, monitor when we pop. Roger, two, engaging. BVR combat. It's the one with the best weapons, tactics, and knowledge of the opponent's weaknesses who eventually wins. Problem is, we can't wait for eventually. This is what we'll do. Three and four targets, southern, south, middle, and western group. I will target southeastern and eastern group with meteors. Two, stay low level and be ready to head for the target. Roger that, on your mark. Meteor one, locked on. It's gonna hit. Now go! Two, heading for RP. Kingdom two, missiles away. Missiles approaching target. Eagle one, ready to damage report. Estimated impact in three, two, one, now. Delta Hotel, the target is destroyed. So there you go guys, a bit of a showcase of this aircraft in that sometimes a little bit cringy video, but uh, really, really interesting fighter jet and you know, I'm not going to do a full review of this aircraft, that's not what I'm here for. The main purpose of this video is to really try and reinforce the fact that Canada needs a replacement and this is the aircraft I think that should combine with the F-35 program to do that role for the Royal Canadian Air Force. It has all the capabilities that's required for Canada, it is able to bring jobs for the aerospace industry for Canada, and it is, in terms of budgetary requirements, quite cheap compared to other resources and aircraft that are available to purchase. It's clearly being updated to a modern day standard to be an extremely capable air to sea, air to ground, air to air, and air to everything fighter jet. And it makes me very, very nervous that we're not looking into this fighter and we're still going into this stopgap capability of buying F-18 Super Hornets, which again are fantastic fighters, but there's not enough of them. 18 fighter jets is not enough for an entire air force. In my personal opinion, I really do feel like this is a great option for Canada and potentially for many other nations around the world. That is not saying that the F-35 should not be produced and made for Canada. I just think that this would be a great complement aircraft to the Royal Canadian Air Force to support it in its roles in the future. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I understand if uh, you don't agree with everything I said, as I said before, it's complete hearsay in my own personal opinion. Uh, feel free to give me your own debate back. I am always interested in everybody's opinions on different types of military equipment. Uh, just leave it in the comment section below. As always, if you do wish to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon account. And if you are new to my channel, subscribe and hit that bell button so that you can be notified in the future of any upcoming military or gaming videos. Thanks for watching again, guys. All the best and have a great day. Bye-bye.